the sheep sheds. Because you saw the smoke first, Corporal McRae. You and your friends will not be bound. Where's Johnny? Ain't he here? He ain't here, Bill. He fell way back behind me and, and Woodrow. It's that bad foot. I gotta go get Johnny. I told him I'd bring him in. To find Johnny. You may be too late, Mr. Coleman. But I gotta go. Johnny's my part. If that's mutton, I'll have some, Maddie. Come on. I see it. I see it. Oh. I swear it's been a cold walk. And you're gonna eat some mutton, you hear me? I won't hear a word about it either. We'll have to be tied again. I regret it, but it is necessary. Can afford no risks on this journey. Crossing the Ordinale is risk enough. Even the Apache will not cross it. This boy is hurt. He can't do nothing. Please, why are you gonna tie him? Because of the fury in him. If I were to choose one of you to tie, I would tie Corporal Cole. We'll see who wants to live and who wants to die. I intend to live. What's the matter, Johnny? I'm be fearful now. It's warmer now. We got food. We're going to make it. Yes, sir, we're going to make it.
Agarren no, nomás lo que pueden cargar. I thought you said Apaches don't come here. Guess those Indians that don't come here took your horse. Gomez came. He's like no other man. He has no fear. And this rope he cut was three feet from your throat. He could just as easily have killed you. He could have. But there would have been little sport. Let's walk. Apache's not like us. Apache can travel for 50 miles on foot in a day. He don't need horses and mules, except to eat them. Well, they wish we was feasting on mule meat for too long. Oh, God, Bill. I hope it don't get cold again tonight. I don't mind dying if I could just do it warm. Shut up, Johnny, and walk. I carried you once, and I'll carry you again if it comes to that. <laughs> This lake. Did he freeze? Well, he's froze now. Yes. Ourselves. 
and this whole bunch is ready to give up. They'll panic and start deserting. Whoever killed Johnny will pick them off one by one. Let's go, Miz. He's toying with us. Mr. Wallace, we may have to fight hand to hand against the Apache before this is done. We'll fight with you, Captain. I can go. I'm done. Get up, senor. I will make camp soon. You can rest then. I'm plumb wore out. I can't go no further, Captain. Senor, I cannot permit this. We would all like to stop. But you're a prisoner under guard, and I make the decisions to stop. I ask you courteously to get up and walk. I prefer not to shoot you, but I will if you do not obey me. Too tired, Captain. I reckon I'm just too tired. I see. I'm sorry, Senor. His suffering is over. Let us march. Vámonos. Adelante. Captain. He's nibbling at us. Captain, most of your men are dying. Most of ours are, too. What's the point of keeping us prisoners when we're all dying? Turn us loose. Let it be every man for himself. Maybe one or two of us will make it home if we do it that way. You want to be free. Kill me. 
Captain, I must have misheard. No, you heard correctly. I've decided that you should all be free. If freedom is what you want. But I'm a Mexican officer. With orders to take you to San Lazaro, and my orders are my orders. I cannot free you. But I can't allow you the opportunity to free yourself. All you have to do is shoot me. Captain, I don't want to shoot you. At times, I could have done it easily. But now you're worse off than we are. I got no stomach for shooting you now. If not you, maybe another. Perhaps Corporal Call would shoot me. He endured the lash and by some miracle survived. Your feet are in pain and yet I kept you walking. Surely you want revenge. Caleb Call broke my foot, not you, Captain. You didn't whip me, neither. I'd shoot you if this was a fight. I can't just take your gun and shoot you down. Corporal McRae, surely you hate me enough to shoot me. Well, I might have could have before, Captain. Now, I'm too tired to shoot anything. I'd sooner get back home and marry my girl. How can you talk about such bosh when a man's life is at stake, you fool? She probably just gone married somebody else by now anyways. Now you shut up. Or I'll break that other foot. Kill me, senorita. And you'll all be free. Free to what? It ain't you I need to be freed of. I ain't a prisoner. I just walked along with these boys. What I'd like to be free of is this damn desert. And shooting you won't accomplish that. Kill me for revenge. Kill me to avenge your dead. Why? They all died from foolishness. All except my shad. My shad died from being at the wrong spot at the wrong time. And shooting you won't bring him back. Or make me miss him any less. My like Caleb Cobb, he'd have shot you. No doubt. He did shoot me. But in that, too, he failed. Maybe I'm wrong. Perhaps he didn't fail. Perhaps he merely wanted me to walk for hundreds of miles before I died. All right. You did not accept my terms. So you were all still my prisoners. If you had killed me, I would have been martyred. Now I'll merely be disgraced. Not in my eyes. Not when you're talking about military work. You've done your best, Captain. You're still doing it. Caleb Cobb never would have got us this far. I agree, Mr. Wallace. But you will not be one of the men who will judge me. I lost most of my men and many of my prisoners. That's the only thing that generals will look at as I deliver you to San Lazaro. Gentlemen, let's march. Vámonos.
¡Capitán! ¡Aquí hay comida! ¡Espérense! ¡Espérense! Water, we could make a fine soup. We do have water. Look, them specks. They're ducks. I seen them take off. There must be water. Boys got good eyesight. Tastes like ashes. It might taste better if it was served on a plate. <laughs> Makes me sneeze. It's bad. <laughs> it does taste bitter as sin. Well, no, I wouldn't know about that, Bill. I myself am a stranger to sin. <laughs> What's the point in Maddie spending all her time with Woodrow? Well, Maddie's got her motherly side. Most cows will take a calf comes up to him if it needs her. Well, I need her too. I'm as much a calf as he is. We're the same age. Yeah, but you're easy to get along with. Woodrow ain't. Well, then she ought to be sitting with me. Not that hard-headed fool. I'll look it in. <laughs> he ain't even talking to her. I could out-talk him any day. Well, maybe it ain't talk she's after. What are you griping about, Gussie? She ain't sitting with me neither. Why are you talking anyway? You don't know nothing about women. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that they don't always cotton to the easy fella. Shoot, if, if they did, I'd have been married long ago. <laughs> oh, Bill's right, Gus. Maddie likes Woodrow because he's hard-headed. Well, I suppose you two fellers know everything. <laughs> Maddie and her boys. I doubt she expected to be mother to two pups when she headed west with this outfit. This soup's put me in the mood for cobbler and taters. My mom could cook some cobbler and taters. I could read a newspaper through this soup if I had a newspaper. Well, I didn't know you could read, Bill. <laughs> Still wish I had my harmonica. It's dreary out here without no tunes. Man, Corporal. If you saw Gomez, you're the only white man to do so and live. I hate New Mexico. If I ain't bears, it's Apache. Where'd he go so fast? There's no cover out here. Apaches can hide better than Comanches. Apache could hide under a cow turd if that's all there was. They're too smart about this country. Corporal's right. We're strangers in this land compared to them. They belong here, we don't. 
we know a little bit about the animals, that's about it. They know which weeds to eat. They can smell out roots and dig them up. When we learn how to smell out roots and which weeds to eat, then we can fight them on even terms. I ain't never gonna be in the mood to study up all weeds. I'll study them if it means something to eat. I'm tired of listening to my belly growl. Oh, you put a bullet in the right place, they'll die just the same as you or me. Their skins ain't the same color as ours, but their blood's just as red. Captain, half of your boys are too scared to shoot. That Apache's just whittling away at us. You think you can trust me with a rifle? The only time I've ever given a Texan a gun, he shot me. Be honorable, Mr. Wallace. I won't shoot you, Captain. But I might shoot Gomez. To the Calayo Mountains. As soon as we cross them, we'll find food. We gotta get to them before we can cross them. They're looking for a piece off. I could walk a week, still not get to them. We ain't gonna last no week unless we find some food. Levántense. Ya casi estamos ahí. Si se quedan aquí, Gómez los van a matar. Levántense. Levántense. They're finished, Captain. We all got our finishing point. These boys have reached theirs. Voy a dejar un rifle y una pistola. I think the captain lost his phone, Dave. Well, that ain't that for us. Lost too many men, too many prisoners. I expect he feels disgraced. He gave those boys a pistol and a rifle each. They can fight if they have to, or shoot themselves if it comes to it. Oh, I can't hardly stand it no more. I just can't. These boys dying. Day after day. Get down to it, Maddie can catch us another snapping turtle. Mr. Wallace. May I have that gun back? Oh, that's right, Captain. This is yours, ain't it? Summer. See me, Captain. Vámonos. Let's go have a drink of water. Soy Capitán Salazar. ¿Dónde está su jefe? No tenemos jefe. Los apaches vinieron cuando él estaba en el campo y se lo llevaron. Ellos se llevan a los jóvenes, Capitán. Por eso no hay hombres jóvenes en el pueblo, ni tampoco mujeres jóvenes. Cuando tienen la edad suficiente para ser esclavos, los apaches se los llevan. ¿Qué dice? Dice que los apaches tomaron la cabeza de su ciudad. Todos los jóvenes y mujeres. Los tomaron todos, as soon as they're old enough, to make slaves out of them.
Why won't you come get warm, Woodrow? Not warm enough. No, you ain't. You're shivering. It's the harm of sitting by the fire on a cold evening. You ain't sitting by it? Well, but I'm fleshy. You're just a skinny stick. I answer my question. Don't like being a prisoner, Maddie. I might have to fight those old men. I might have to kill some of them. I'd just as soon not get friendly. Why would you want to kill them? They ain't bad. They sent their women to feed us. We haven't been fed this good since San Saba. Eating Salazar ain't so bad. I've met plenty of worse Mexicans. Worse whites, too. I didn't say he was so bad. But I won't be a prisoner much longer, Maddie. I might have to escape. I can't be free. I may as well be dead. See San Lazaro, Captain. How much further is it? We'll be there tonight, Mr. Wallace. You are Captain Salazar? Mr. Sordenis. I am Major Lagos. Why are these men not tied? I've walked a long way with these men. Together we have crossed the Ornada del Muerto. They're not tied because they know that I'll shoot them if they try to escape. They would be easier to hit if they were tied. They are prisoners. Prisoners should be tied. Time first. And then tie the one with take the general. Which is he? Corporal Call. Stand up. Perhaps you should chain them too, Major. You know Texans are very wild. Where's the rest of your troop, Captain? Dead. The Apaches followed us into the Ornada. They killed some, a bear killed some. The rest starved to death. But you had the horses when you left Santa Fe. Where are the horses? Some died, some were stolen. I suggest you go home, Captain. Your commanding officer will want to know why you lost most of your men on all of your horses. I am told you were well provisioned. No one should have starved. Gomez killed General Demacio. He killed Colonel Cobb. Gomez is the reason we lost our horses and our men. No officer in the Mexican army should be bitten by a savage, Captain. Monday, perhaps, they will let me go after these Gomez. When I catch him, I'll put a hook through his neck and hang him in the plaza in Santa Fe. You won't catch him. Is there a blacksmith in the village? No. Because if there were, I would chain this man now. We are in the hurry. We can chain him in San Lazaro. Major, I have no horses. Do you expect me to walk back to Santa Fe? I am a captain in the Mexican army. Yes. A disgraced captain. You walked here, you walked back. I am almost out of ammunition. If you send us back with no horses and no bullets, Gomez will kill all of us. Ask that priest for a prayer. If he's a good priest, his prayers might be better than bullets and horses. I'd rather have bullets and horses. Goodbye, Captain. 
If I was you, I'd travel at night. Stay close to the river. That way you might make it. Adios, Captain. He ain't such a bad fella. I hope you get home alive. Vámonos para allá. Vámonos. Soldiers told me the Major's French. Why would a Frenchie fight with the Mexicans? Money. I mostly fought for sport, but plenty do it for the pay. I wouldn't. I'd take the pay, but I got other reasons for fighting. What other reasons? Can't you hear Woodrow? I asked you what other reasons. Woodrow don't know why he likes to fight. He don't know why he hit that general and got himself whipped raw. Chad didn't know why he wandered. He was just a wandering man. That Woodrow, he's a fighter. Gentlemen, you are filthy. You need a bath. A fine ceremony awaits you in San Lazaro. If you bathe in the river, perhaps you'll be presentable when we reach our destination. Untie them. What kind of a ceremony would that be, Major? I will let that be a surprise. Strip, gentlemen. Your bath awaits. I'm tired of stinking. I'm going first. Nobody minds. Hurry up, gentlemen. The lady has set you an example. Sargento, que se entrenen. Don't kill you! 
Sandbirds are hard to see. Bring him over here. seen something bad. What, big? Well, I just seen a skeleton holding a candle. Well, I guess they put us in here with the dead. Oh. Good morning, gentlemen. You all look weary. Wrong, monsieur. Well, I see skeletons, Major. One of them just brought me my boots. They are in skeletons, Monsieur Wallace. They are leopards. San Lazaro is a leopard colony. Good Lord, so that's it. I, I seen a leopard once. It was in New Orleans. That one didn't have no hands at all. I reckon I'll just stay barefoot for a while. Some of that leprosy might have gone on my boots. Well, what are they, Bill? Are they dead or alive? Well, the one I've seen looks somewhere in between. These wives are fatter than buffalo humps. They got a firing squad. They're gonna shoot us. They ain't gonna shoot us. This here's just a show of some kind for that fat Mexican. There's a priest, too. They don't need a priest in a firing squad if this is just a show. At last, 
The moment for our ceremony arrives. You are all guilty of attempting to overthrow the lawful government of New Mexico. By the normal laws of war, you would all be shot. But the authorities have decided to be merciful. Merciful how? Some will live and some will die. The woman we will spare. But you soldiers must pay the consequences of your actions. We started from Texas with more than 100 men. Now we're down to seven. I'd call that punishment. I don't know what you'd call it. That is but the fortunes of war, Monsieur Wallace. In the jar, there are white beans and black beans. You will each draw a bean. The man who draw white beans will live. The man who draw black beans will die. We have a priest, as you can see, and we have a firing squad. So, gentlemen, who will be the first to draw a bean? Good. Our first volunteer. You are brave enough to start, monsieur. Your courage has been rewarded. You will live. Step aside, please. We need another volunteer. You want to go on and draw? Woodrow we'll went first. Maybe I'll go last. Sure. You must choose. Come. Be brave like your comrades. you to go first. You 
sing over me, Maddie. Oh, I will. Sure, I will. You was a true friend of my shit. Lighten them up. I've seen many a man die with his eyes wide open, Major. I expect I can do the same. As you wish, Monsieur. Waste your water on the trip home, boys. You're gonna have a lot of dry country to cross. Did you hear that? Yes, I heard it. I ain't ever heard singing like that before, Major. Who is that woman? That's Lady Carey. She's English. She's a prisoner of war like yourselves. us a week if we travel light. Well, I bet we're a long ways from home yet. Hell, it's windy enough we could blow back to Austin. We need weapons. None of us would make it without weapons. Gentlemen, I have an invitation for you. Lady Carrie would like to ask you to tea. She's inviting us to what? Tea. And Miss Roberts. She knows you've traveled a long way. She thought you might appreciate a hot bath. Why, well, I would. I would. 
I mainly just been bathing in the river and the river gets so cold. Then come along with me. Now, it's tea we're supposed to be sipping? <laughs> yes. Lady Carrie is English and the English serve tea every day at this hour. It's like a small meal. You gentlemen come along in about half an hour. Follow me. If you don't, Willie will eat all the cucumber sandwiches. Willie! Are you Texans? I am a Scot. This is William, the Viscount Mount Stewart. You may call him Willie. Now, if you're a Scot, you're a far piece from home. That's why Mother wants to see you. She wants you to take us home. Follow me. Well, now, what will we ride? See, our horses got stolen a long while back. Oh, my mother has horses. There's a stable in Buckley Leprosarium. Uh, the what? The Leprosarium. Aren't you lepers? Now, Willie, don't be pointing that gun at our guests. That would be quite impolite. Of course, I've been impolite, too. I failed to introduce myself. I'm Emerald. Lady Carrie will see you now. And her father was a king. Willie, the polite thing would be for you to let our guests have a go at the sandwiches first. I'm Lucinda Carey. Welcome to San Lazaro. I'm Augustus McRae. Why, Willie, he's Scott, like us. And this here is a Woodrow call, Wesley Buttons, and Long Bill William. Coleman. William Coleman. There's lots of food, gentlemen. You may wish to wash first before you eat. Well, ma'am, if there's a grub, I'm for eating first and washing later. Very well. Please sit down. Much obliged. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am. Why, Maddie, is that you? Of course it's me, Gussie. Don't you recognize me? Why, yes, ma'am. Willie? Oh, you'll have to excuse us, gentlemen. When we're hungry, we have no manners at all. I expect it's the wind. It blows, don't it? Mama caught leprosy in our plantation in the islands. I didn't catch it, and neither did Emerald. Poor luck. I was the only one afflicted. Well, Papa might have had it, but we don't know because the Mexicans shot him first. That's when we were made prisoners of war. Now, Willie, our guests have traveled a long way and lost many friends themselves. We needn't burden them with our misfortunes. I, I lost my shed, too. It was a stray bullet. The Mexican government has agreed to release us, but what they won't do is provide us with an escort. We would hope you gentlemen would escort us as far as Austin. <laughs> but let's finish our sandwiches first. It's very impolite to discuss business when one's guests are enjoying their food. Ma'am, if you have a plan for leaving, then I'm for talking right now. <laughs> no cause for alarm, gentlemen. That's Elphinstone. He's Willie's boa. Only he's too big for me. Mama and Emerald play with him now. My father has paid these greedy generals a handsome sum for our release. And we would like to travel as soon as possible. So, what do you think of my proposal? <laughs> Ma'am, we'd be pleased to take you. But it's a far piece and we've no mounts and no gear. Fortunately, we carry Aunt Paul. I'll send you to town with enough gold to equip us properly. 
Don't skimp either. We have a tent large enough for ourselves and Miss Roberts, but I'm afraid you men will have to sleep out. Ma'am, we don't know how to sleep any way else but out. If we get some slickers and some blankets, we'll be cozy enough. So when might we leave? Tomorrow, if you can equip us today. Emerald will provide you with money and mounts for your trip to town. Well, shall we eat? Does that mean? Well, it certainly is, Maddie. Woodrow. Woodrow, what's your opinion? Of course it's you. It's a mirror. It don't show nobody but the person that looks in it. Now, do you think I'm pretty now that I've had a proper bath? Well, you're cleaner now, Maddie. You was always pretty. I think I'm prettier. Clean. I think I'm a bunch prettier. Clean. She rides off too far, that buffalo man's gonna get her. We're in his country now, and she don't know it. She will know it, I'll tell her. Little boy. Ma'am, you oughtn't ride off too far. We're in Comanche country. <laughs> I'm not a hen, Corporal. You needn't act like a rooster. Fight this. It's a lurchy way to travel if you ask me. Why is she stopping just to paint a hill? You can't rush a woman like that, Woodrow. It's a long ways to Austin. We ain't near through Comanche country.
Ma'am, we're back to where it's wild again. Yes, it is wild, isn't it? It's like a smell. I smelled it in Africa. And I smell it here. It means we have to be careful now. On the contrary, Corporal Call. It means we have to be wild, like the wild men. Are you wild enough, Corporal Call? I have a feeling you are. I guess we'll see. Colors. See the colors? No. These are bigger. The pistol. The beautiful pistol. This isn't working. Get me the ball. Think of that, huh? Look at that. You like that? Yes, yes. <laughs> Told you the gypsy glass would do it. Mani tuo kotawe penaki so madi weku. Ke? Be delicious. Sapehi, Saku ka pina ka weha, he ya ya weha, tunana tessa, pahi tuai, tena tessa, Tony Pizza Udumik, Taivoi tao tao domai, Taivoi then a putsa, a tutua, aveka, Usu ivoi tate, Nane tuha a peka, Taivoi pekusa naki, Uka don't see where me ki tue, uhu kato wena. Smell some. 
The wild men are here, my lady. Yes, they are. It's interesting singing, isn't it? I wonder what it means. It means death. It means they want our hair. But they may want it, but they can't have it. Corporal Cool, I will need my horse. We can't whip them. I don't think we can outrun them, ma'am. <laughs> no, we won't be running. Gentlemen, none of you may look at me now. Well, but why not, ma'am? Because I intend to disrobe. Matilda, will you carry my clothes? I shall want them, of course, once I've dispersed these savages. Cinch my horse carefully, Corporal, so he won't jump. I've got to be a regular lady good diver this morning. I don't want any trouble from that black beast. Emerald, will you bring me my fine snake, Elphinstone? Give me Elphinstone. I'm in rather good voice today. I intend to sing my best arias. I expect I can yell almost as loud as a Comanche. Emerald, can you take my husband's fine sword and flourish it aloft? Gladly, my lady. All right, then. Let's put them to rout. One day, a dark woman with a sword will come on a white mule. When the woman comes on the white mule, it will be the end of the time of the Comanche people. There will be wars and pestilence, and our people will perish. And you, my son, must not turn your back to the woman on the white mule. Your death will come only when your great hump is pierced. Do not turn your back on her. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Beware the dark woman on the white mule. Who's 
says opera isn't useful. I must write to Signor Verdi and tell him his arias were not appreciated by the wild Comanche. She saved us, Woodrow. He didn't kill us. No, but we didn't kill him either. We should have. You're right. Reckon he'll be back. If he does come back, he won't find me. Why not, Bill? If I ever get to town, I aim to take up carpentry and sleep in a bed. That's why not. I've had enough of this sleeping outside. Rangering's a rare sport, but it ain't quite safe. Yeah. Why's he backing his horse like that? I don't know, Woodrow. You're so curious, why don't you go and ask him? I'll look down there and see you sometime. All right, hop in. You've been a fine companion, Miss Roberts. I want you to have this. To remind you that you are a lady as well. Why, thank you, ma'am. I never knew what a real lady was. I just about give up on being pretty. Till I met you. Will you visit us, Corporal Cole? Oh, I expect I might. I'd like you to have this. What's this for? It's to remind you to be wild, Corporal. When wildness is required. Wild Ranger boys. I guess they didn't starve after all. <laughs> well, I hear they didn't capture Santa Fe neither. Captured? We didn't even see it. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, well, better be off on my errands, honey. Glad you boys made it back. Just back. Still with Craig. Howdy, Miss Clara. I got here just as fast as I could. Too fast for your friend Corporal Call. He looks fair tuckered out. I wouldn't be surprised if he fainted. I never yet fainted. And I ain't tuckered out. <laughs> I believe Mr. McCrae came in here thinking he was going to kiss me. Was that your notion, sir? Well, ma'am, when I was leaving. Oh, that, yes. <laughs> I don't put much stock in goodbye kisses. Besides, you boys have been gone such a long spell, I could be married by now, for all you know. I told you she wouldn't wait. You didn't. Are you married? All I said was I could be married now. As it happens, I just ain't met the right fella yet. And I guess you won't now that I'm back. 
I'll give any feller that interferes a licking he'll never forget. <laughs> He's brash, ain't he, Corporal? What do you think? Should I kiss him? Should you what? Kiss him. Why are you asking him? Ain't none of his look at <laughs> Hush, want his opinion. Well, he wrote all night. You were all he talked about for 2,000 miles. See, Corporal Call's got sense. If he hadn't spoke up for you, I doubt I'd have kissed you for a whole month. <laughs> 